But it's the week before Christmas. It's the Sunday before Christmas. Over the last few weeks, I've been listening to a lot of Christmas music. And there's one song in particular, it, uh, the lyrics are pretty minimal and often versions of it don't even contain the lyrics. It's the song Carol of the Bells. Uh, in the Facebook comments uh, on the post I made it, letting people know about our service this morning, uh, I included a link to a version of the song if you're curious. But the Carol of the Bells is this song that it's, to me, I guess the word I use to describe it is, it can be very epic. It starts off quiet, this haunting little melody, and then suddenly it becomes louder and it becomes more intense. And the melody continues building and building into this, uh, what's the word, crescendo? Crescendo. And then it fades again into this soft melodic rhythm before building yet again. Uh, if you look it up on YouTube, I recommend the version by uh, the piano guys. Uh, but anyway, that song, the way it starts out and builds and builds and hits notes and comes down, and build, it reminds me a lot of the Gospel of John, which is what we're gonna look at this morning. John begins his Gospel with nothing but God. The Gospel of John begins with nothing but God. And then God begins to create. And there is this dramatic unfolding of creation that builds and gets more intense. And then if we compare it to Genesis, we know that that building, that intensity, it gets to this point where human beings are created in God's, in God's image. And then suddenly, human sin uh, comes into the picture as people disobey God who created them. And this grand piece of creation becomes this loud, crashing orchestra as sin takes its devastating effect on the world. And then the music begins to build again. And we come to a point where all of a sudden, the music gets quiet. And this is, the, this is where John's version of the Christmas story comes in. John's version is simple. God became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus was born into this world. The music begins to build it again into this cacophony of sound as we approach Jesus' crucifixion. And then it bursts into this joyous melody as Jesus rises from the tomb. The story we find in the Bible, the story of God and his creation, God and his people, is like a dramatic piece of music that ebbs and flows and builds until it soars in this song of triumph and victory. This morning, let's look at the Christmas story that we find in the Gospel of John. John's Gospel is a little different from the other ones, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In fact, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are referred to as the synoptic gospels, and uh, because they're, they have some similar elements, whereas John's very different from them in the way it's it's written. Uh, he chooses different events to highlight. He has a bit of a different theological emphasis. He puts things in a different chronological order to to make that uh, that theological case. And his literary, literary style is just a little different from, from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, but they all tell us the story of, of how Jesus came to set his people free. So let's look at John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word. And without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life. And the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him, everyone would believe in the light. 
He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children. Born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. And here's John's Christmas story in John 1, 14. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him crying out, this is the one of whom I said, he who comes after me is greater than me because he existed before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son who is at the Father's side, has made God known. I love that passage. I was mentioning, I listened to a lot of Christmas music recently. Christmas carols are one of the things that I, I love about this time of year. I love carols that are full of passion. And, and I mentioned the carol of the bells, but there, there's other good ones as well. To hear somebody with a really beautiful voice sing, Oh, Holy Night, well, it's fantastic. Or God rest ye merry gentlemen. I love those songs. They're full of passion and meaning and theology. In the Gospel of John, we find the Christmas story, but John approaches it from a very different view uh, than what Matthew and Luke tell us. Uh, John's gospel tells us a Christmas story using very few words, but describing something on this vast cosmic scale. John wants us to know and to understand uh, that the humble little story of a baby being born in a manger that we all know it was the most significant moment in time since the creation of the world. The story that began in creation was still playing out like this grand symphony. It was the symphony, symphony of the cosmos. And it began when, when God spoke, or, or you might picture sang everything into being. God's work in this world begins like the conductor of a great symphony. And then all of these different elements come together, coming together at just the right time. And then that, that symphony hits its high note when Jesus enters into our world. What we celebrate at Christmas time is, is one of those high, high notes in the middle of this beautiful thing that God has created, that God has been building towards since the beginning of time. God was building towards Christmas from the very beginning of everything. Well, the Gospel of John refers to Jesus as the Word. The Word was with God, the Word was God. And then it says the Word became flesh and blood, and all the mothers referring to Jesus. So the Gospel of John refers to Jesus as the Word. The Word is the agent of creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word. Without the Word, nothing came into being. John reminds us uh, of the creation story in Genesis. And he makes it clear that, that it was Jesus who brought everything into being. Um, this triune God that we worship was involved in creation. I, I was read, I read a little poll this week about uh, people, that, they polled Christians, people who attended church regularly, and they were surprised at the number of people who thought that uh, Jesus didn't come into existence until, uh, until the nativity. 
And the truth is, no, Jesus always existed. Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father, the three in one, they were, they were all coexisting. They, uh, it's that mystery of the Trinity. Jesus was there with God. He was a part of what God was doing in the beginning. Everything God was doing was done through him. Remember what was happening in the first few chapters of Genesis? Light comes forth from the darkness. God speaks and out of nothing comes everything. God speaks the word and light springs up. God says, let us make man in our image. And human beings were created in God's image. Male and female, he created them. Then God looks at all he has done. And he breathes a sigh of, of uh, accomplishment. You know, it's interesting. Jesus, uh, yeah, in cre the creation story, on the seventh day, it says God rested. God pauses. Now, I don't think God was just exhausted. I don't think he was just tired out. I think God had come to this, this sort of natural finishing point. And he breathed this sigh. He took this moment to enjoy his creation, to rest from the work and enjoy that creation. And he says, it's all good. And then sin enters the world. This beautiful creation is scarred by sin and death. But thankfully, praise the Lord, that's not the end of the story. It's really still the beginning. It's the introduction. The rest of the symphony was yet to play out. And in John chapter 1, we see something similar to Genesis. The Christmas story of God becoming flesh and blood is a part of that symphony heading towards a new creation. Jesus, the Word, who is, who is all things were created through, he is redeeming, he is recreating what was lost to sin. John says in the beginning was the Word, Jesus. And the word Jesus was with God, and the word Jesus was God. Nothing was created that wasn't created through him. And, and John is equally clear about what Christmas really is. The word became flesh and made his home with us. Now think about what that means, that the word became flesh. In Jesus, we have seen God in all his glory, Scripture teaches us. The word Jesus was life, life in all its meaning, life in all its hope. Life is found in Jesus. And in the life-giving word of Jesus, we find the light to guide us through this dark, sin-scarred world. God came to us. The word Jesus is eternal. He's not created. The word Jesus is God. It comes back to the great mystery of faith we call the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three figures and yet somehow beyond our understanding, all one. The love of God that we celebrate at Christmas is God's response to our sin. His response to our sin was to become flesh, to step down into our mess that we have created to rescue us. And you know what? It really is a mess. We all notice that. If I might put it not so delicately, delicately, what we celebrate God doing at Christmas is a lot like a farmer climbing down into the pig pen with a shovel. He came to clean up our mess because we couldn't clean it up ourselves. The extent of uh, the world's filth is part of what makes the act of what God did at Christmas so full of love and so beautiful. Our world is a mess. Poverty, violence, sexual immorality, disease, hate, selfishness, death. And then there's God, holy and pure, creator of everything. And he came down into this because he loves us and we couldn't save ourselves. So he came to do what we could not. 
that Bible study, we talked about uh, how, if you really look back in history, it kind of shows that people are no more sinful than they've ever been. Uh, they've simply become more created and capable of committing uh, the same sins on a grander scale. God knew we needed a Savior. And praise the Lord, a Savior has come. And his name is Jesus. And that's what we celebrate this time of year. Christmas is our grand celebration of the word entering our world. And in the word we find life. Consider these lyrics from Charles Wesley's song, Hark the Herald Angels. There's a verse that says, Mild, he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. Wesley really nails his theology of Christmas. God set aside his glory, humbled himself, and became a human being. He entered the world the exact same way we do. And he did all of this because sin had brought death into this world. And he wanted to save his children. God, creator of all heaven and earth, had stepped down into the filth of our world. He came to us. Hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Isaiah had written that the Messiah would be called Emmanuel, God with us. And that's exactly what God did. He came down, came down to us, he lived among us, and it was to bring hope to the people he loved who were lost in darkness. Jesus was fully, completely God Almighty. And Jesus was also fully human. God, Jesus, lived out, our, he lived out our common human existence, our common human experience, I should say. He showed us how it was done, and he became the, the fitting sacrifice for our sins, for the sins of the world. Jesus was a human without spot or blemish. He didn't, he never sinned. And although Jesus never sinned, he was still subject to the same human consequences of sin in this world. If Jesus stubbed his toe, it hurt. If he worked hard, his back hurt. He got tired, he got hungry. He went through this world just like we do. But he set an example for us. Jesus was fully human. Wesley got his Christmas theology right. Now on the other hand, there's a this is a Christmas carol that sometimes people pick on because uh, depending on how you look at it, they may get some theology a little wrong. Uh, the song Away in a Manger, we all know that. I like that song. There's a line in the song, though, that says, uh, the little Jesus, no crying he makes. And some people take offense at that. Um, the truth is, Jesus would have cried like any other baby because Jesus was a human being. He was fully God and fully human. In fact, we know Jesus cried uh, as a grown man because uh, later in John's Gospel, in chapter 11, verse 35, it says Jesus wept. So for me, when I hear a way in a manger, I simply choose to take that line about the baby Jesus not crying as being about a particular moment when Jesus, like any baby, has a moment of comfort and no need to cry because he was fully human and fully God. Jesus was fully God. We look around at the beauty of creation. The sun and the moon and the mountains and the lakes, they cry out in beauty to our creator. One of the most beautiful things that you can see around here is go to the top of Douglas Mountain, go up in the little observation tower and look Look at the lake, look over at Mount Washington. God's creation is beautiful, and when that view cries out at how amazing our Creator is. 
Nothing was created that wasn't created through Jesus. And Jesus is the one true hope for this world. Jesus is the one way. Jesus is the one truth at the center of everything. Jesus is life. He creates. And when we put our trust in him, he recreates us. He brings new life to those who put their trust in him. Jesus is God's plan for salvation. There is no plan B. He's the only way. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father but through me. There's no plan B. So let me sum up Christmas this way. Jesus, the word, is our hope in the darkness. Jesus, the word, is our hope as we face the world's problems. War, famine, disease, death. Jesus is our hope, our only hope in this sin-sick world. Jesus is our hope as we face our nation's problems. Hate, division, and tribalism, crime and drug, drug abuse, death. Jesus is our only hope in this sin-sick nation. And Jesus is the only problem, uh, Jesus is the only hope as we face the problems in our own families. There are dysfunctional marriages, there are absent and abusive parents, there is sibling rivalry and jealousy, and there is death. Jesus is our only hope in our sin sick families. Today, in the midst of all your problems, Jesus is the light. Jesus is life. He has come to you and his invitation is simple. Come follow me. His style of leading is easy. Keep following me. Because the truth is in Jesus we find hope because Jesus changes everything. That grand symphony that began with the word at creation, it's still going. It began with a low rumble as everything was brought into existence through Jesus. It takes a dark turn as sin enters the world and then it begins to build up as Jesus enters our world, becoming flesh, soaring higher and higher until the crucifixion, then hitting its climax with the resurrection. And then it's followed by a reframe that goes on and on and on and on. The symphony goes on and on without end. And it includes you and I. You are part of the song Jesus is singing. But the choice is up to us whether or not we sing along with it. Let's sing one last song together in worship as we close this morning. So in the name of Jesus I said, May the word in whom all things were created bring you hope, joy, love, and peace during this Christmas season. God bless you and enjoy your act.